Uh, Father, uh, we thank you so much uh, for this day that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for uh, allowing us to be able to gather together, not only this morning and be uh, worshiping you and challenged in your word, uh, to be making sure that we are living each day with the knowledge that we're pilgrims just passing through, as well as the reminder to make sure that we're passing Christ along, uh, starting with our families and, and then branching out to our, our schools, our, our workplaces, uh, on the sports field, uh, where, wherever we're at, Lord, uh, that we would be representing you well. Uh, thank you for the challenge and may that uh, resound in our hearts and minds. Uh, we, we praise you for allowing us to gather again tonight, Lord, uh, in celebration of, of you, um, but also in celebration of, of our young people that have uh, come through high school and, and college uh, and have graduated, Lord. We thank you so much for being with them each step of the way. Uh, we thank you for our young people, Lord, and those who are able to make it out tonight and uh, just the opportunity to be able to sing praises to you and point all things back to you uh, for your honor and, and glory. Father, have your hand a blessing on this evening. Uh, accomplish your will both uh, in us and through us, we pray. In your son's name, amen. Uh, we're going to, uh, per our usual, the, the youth uh, take the offering up real quick. We do that right away. Uh, so per our usual, we're going to take up offering, and uh, Luke Richards will be playing the offertory for us. God.
They're going to do special music now. Uh, Haley and Luke are going to be singing, and then uh, Luke is also going to sing by himself afterwards.
sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. But right now, right now I'm losing bad. I stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now. Oh, right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down What will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I It only takes a little faith to move a mountain. A good thing, a little faith is all I have right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, well, give me the strength. Be able to say it is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can say through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt, but I'll go. Just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. You've been faithful, you've been good all my days. Jesus, I will cling to you, come what may, because I know. My name is Chloe. I'm one of the graduates. Side note real quick, my open house is June 30th from 4 to 9 at my house. Um, as most of you know, I will be going to Spain in three weeks. Um, I will be going with Word of Life. We will be working at two different camps, one Madrid. Um, I will be helping out in any way that I can, uh, photography, counseling, ministering, um, anything they are having me do. Uh, after that, I'll be coming home for a month, working and earning some money for college. Um, I will be attending uh, the Bible Institute, Word of Life Bible Institute in New York. Uh, Word of Life has a two-year program that I would love to do, 
Um, but for right now, I'm doing the one-year program, and if the Lord allows it, I'll be doing both years. Um, and after the two-year program at Word of Life, um, I would like to attend another college, uh, which is in Minnesota. It's called Bethany University, and they have a program called the LEAD Internship. It is a Christian media program uh, that uh, is uh, ministering through the media, through social media, um, and any way that is through um, video or photography. Uh, they have, it's a one-year program. They have the first semester, which is learning how to use software um, and learning how to take the videos and everything um, and learning how to make a correct video um, and a nice one. And then the second semester is a um, taking what you learned the first semester and using it um, in everyday uh, program or everyday um, assignments that they give you. Um, then at the end of the whole year, they give you a large assignment to do um, that they send you either overseas um, in a different state or just staying at the campus and you can choose whether to do the project alone or doing it with a team. And this is all just a, I guess a rough draft of what the next few years will be looking uh, like for me. Uh, I don't know what the Lord is calling me to do exactly, uh, even though I am feeling a passion for uh, video missions work, which is working with other missionaries in other countries and helping them with their social media, making videos for them, promoting for them. Um, but it is all in the Lord's hand and I am letting him lead in it. Uh, and before I give the podium to Callie, um, I wanted to share this verse with you that I learned at camp this past week. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great Savior and Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 11 through 13. Um, and this verse has helped me remembering to live self-controlled lives and simply obeying him right here, right now um, is not just what I need to do, but we all need to be doing um, while we wait for his second coming. Thank you. Hi, I'm Callie Motzinger, as many of you know. I graduated from Ogama Heights, and my open house is also on the 30th of June, it's from noon to four. And Landon asked me to talk a little bit about my plans this summer, and so I've had the opportunity to go on two different mission trips. And the first one is to Honduras, and I'm very thankful to say that I've raised all my support for that one. And our main focus will be uh, working with the youth ministries and in the church services there, but also a big project will be um, helping build chimneys and houses there because a lot of the people live in huts or smaller houses and they often have stoves or fires in their house, but there's nowhere for the smoke to go. So that um, leads to a lot of health problems. The second trip is with the church to Brazil. And so I'm still working on raising money for that. And we're a little bit working on the schedule. We don't know our full plans yet, but I'm very excited for that as well. And I'll be attending Pensacola Christian College for nursing this fall. Hi, I'm Becca Wilcox, and um, this summer, well, my open house is June 23rd, which is next Saturday, from 3 to 6. I know the invitation isn't out there. I forgot to turn it in. But um, I just graduated yesterday with Callie, actually. And so for the summer, I'll be working at the West Branch Dairy Queen to save money for college. And then I plan on attending Grand Valley State University to, stutter, to study um, psychology and then after I do major in that, I want to go to physical therapy school. Are you ready to heart? Yeah. Edgar Hardy? Because where are you from? 
Ask, oh, oh, sorry. Ask Arisa. Ask Arisa, it's a heart. Hmm? Um, okay. Arisa! Uh, thank you, graduates. That was a, a blessing to us. I have one quick story to tell you about Andrew, and uh, I'm doing that while I recognize that we have three beautiful young ladies up here, and, and uh, wow, we're very proud of that. And then, uh, then my buddy Andrew, um, just got to tell you, because we're, we're proud of all of our young people. By the way, thank you, young people. Our, uh, we just love it when you host our evening service, and that's always a blessing to us, and so we appreciate that. And Pastor Landon and Aubrey and all the leaders, again, our hearts are full of thanksgiving uh, for them. And uh, these uh, ladies are very, very special to us, and we certainly are privileged to, to know them and love them and uh, to support them in many different ways, and including and especially our prayers. And so as they go forward, we... I want to assure them that it will be with our prayers. I have to tell you a quick story about my buddy Andrew. Uh, it happened just this morning, and uh, it has uh, very quickly become a treasured memory. Uh, Donna and uh, Mark and Andrew were heading out this morning after our morning service. Pastor Tom sweating all the time. Just about everybody knows that. I have a couple of my young people friends that remind me that, boy, I sweat a lot. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, they, they probably wouldn't understand when Pastor Tom tells them that I'm having hot flashes and things like that, but so I'm one unique fellow. Uh, so I usually have my handkerchief in my hands and uh, wiping my face, uh, not because I want to, but I have to. So I was standing in the back with Mrs. Ann, and they were coming through the line, I had my handkerchief in my hand, and I was greeting people, and I greeted Andrew, and he was reaching to my hand, and he was grabbing this hand, and it took me a minute to figure out what he was doing. He was trying to get this handkerchief out of my hand. So I finally let it go, and I wondered what he was going to do, and he took it, and he put it to my forehead. And, and he, he wiped uh, Pastor Tom's brow. Isn't that a very, a, a very special thing? So, so thank you for that, Andrew. We have a, uh, a gift for you. Uh, I, I'm the I'm the privileged one to be able to give it to you on behalf of the church. And then I'm going to pray for you, and then you can take your seat. And Pastor Tom has a brief challenge for you also. Let me grab your gifts. There you go, Andrew. Thank you. Back up. Uh, you know what, I'm going to have you stand with me as we pray for these precious people. Uh, God, we are uh, so thankful tonight for these young people, and we thank you for the privilege that we've had and uh, trust we'll continue to have to be uh, the recipients of their ministry. Uh, we are confident that they know you and love you, and for that we are glad. And, and again, they have uh, demonstrated these things not only to us, but to you, which is the most important thing. Uh, this certainly is a milestone in their lives, and yet uh, we know, Lord, that uh, your, your plan will continue to unfold, and uh, the prospects of that are exciting because uh, we are reminded virtually every day that, um, that your, your plan is good and uh, that you will seek to prosper us uh, in the things of the Lord. So I pray your special hand of blessing upon, upon Andy and Becca and Callie and Chloe. And Lord, I uh, pray for our other graduates as well, some from college, and uh, would ask that you would be blessing them as well. So Lord, thank you for their testimonies tonight, and thank you for um, what you have been doing in their lives, and certainly then with a view to the future, as we keep our eyes fixed on you, uh, what you have in store for them. And so, Lord, uh, do a great work in every heart, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated.
kind of like this that, that, you know, the young people don't because I get right down in the spitting zone, but, but this is uh, s sort of a, a treat for us. And um, again, I, uh, very, very easy to, for me to speak from my heart, uh, you know, because of our love for you all and certainly uh, to our graduates. You know, I, I, I'm switching things up a little bit. I, we, we have a text, and we're certainly going to go with that, but I'm, I'm choosing to just uh, sit down with you and talk heart-to-heart uh, -heart for a few moments. Uh, if you received a program tonight, you know our verse of interest. is Psalm 39 and verse 4. It says, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. And uh, Brother Dave has it up on the screen for us as well. I get such a kick out of this. Um, and by the way, we're, we're talking to our graduates tonight, but uh, certainly anything that God would say to them, uh, he, he would want to say to us as well. And so hopefully uh, all of our ears and hearts are open. This is a very interesting verse. Here's what I envisioned, because um, you all deserve better than Pastor Tom, I mean, like, you know, for, for a graduation address. And I, I thought, boy, um, I, I wonder who we would have come to address our uh, beloved graduates. And uh, one of the first ones I think we would think of is, is David uh, King. Wow. And um, Warrior. Wow. And, uh, you know, especially a man after God's own heart. And then I wondered what he would say to y'all. And uh, that led me to Psalm 39 and verse 4. And as I contemplated these things, I realized that David would not be a very popular graduation speaker. <laughs> I think he would speak one time and never be invited to speak again. And, and here's why I'm saying this. Listen to the verse again. Lord... Make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Now, I just want to cover with you very quickly four things that David would ask our graduates and all of those beyond. Four things that David would ask us to contemplate at this very special juncture in your life. Unbelievable. One, oh boy. Your death. By the way, I probably should wait to tell you this at the very end, and we're not going to be long, but I probably should wait to tell you this at the very end, but I'm telling you now because we have that kind of relationship. I, I preach this verse at funerals. Seriously, what in the world is David doing here tonight? prompting our graduates, you graduates, to think about your death, and why would he do that? And I want to come back to that and answer that question, but I also want to note a couple of other contrasts. You know, you know David, just is, David is certainly thinking different than our world. Oh, there isn't anything that David says here that you would hear from the worldling, from the world. In fact, what you would hear from the world, even and especially at a time of graduation, is the exact opposite of what we hear from David. And by the way, there, that, that's a very, very important principle. Because you and I, we are constantly bombarded by this world's philosophy. And, and I will tell you, even from a pastoral standpoint, that we all in measure are impacted by it. That, that's why a lot of times we're surprised by what God says. Because we're so influenced by this world's philosophy. So while this, this will blow people away, David's uh, graduation address where he's prompting you to think about your death. Hey, we're thinking about life at graduation. Some of us are thinking, man, I can finally start living. And then God shows up on the scene, David representing him and says, I, I want our graduates to think about their death, their end, not the beginning, their their end. And, and David wants our graduates to think, the instruction is to measure your days, to measure our days. And so David 
not only prompts us at four things. One, he prompts us to think about our death. Two, he prompts us to think about the brevity of our life leading up to the death. <laughs> Please, God, what are you doing? And then he wants us to contemplate two other things, a total of four. One, our death. Two, the brevity of our life. Three, can you believe this? This is the exact opposite of what you would hear from the world. He wants us to contemplate and consider our weakness that I may know how frail I am. And by the way, and there's a little bit of semantic stuff with this. This is kind of neat with the, with the word frail. And we get a third and fourth thing from it. God wants us to contemplate our death. He wants us to consider and contemplate the brevity of our life. He wants us to contemplate and consider our weakness. And he wants us to consider and contemplate how empty, this too is forthcoming from the word frail, how empty our lives quickly become when we sever it from God and the things of God. Oh, graduates, you'll never regret loving and serving and obeying God and the word of God. You'll regret anything other than that, but I can guarantee you, you'll never regret that. So here's David, he wants us to contemplate um, four things, and the first one I'm gonna come back to, but let me cover the others. Uh, again, he wants us to contemplate our death. Why would God have us do that? And I'll give you the answer in just a moment. He wants us to contemplate the measure of our days, that is the brevity of our life. Well. Why would God want us to do that? And why would David have the audacity to prompt our graduates to think about that? Well, there's wisdom in that. Remember, it's James who teaches us that life is like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. You've heard from Pastor Tom before. I'm saying it again tonight. Man, if you and I are ever going to do anything for Jesus and with Jesus, we better do it now because life is here today and gone tomorrow. So, I mean, there's a sense to this. God is making sense, but wow, we wouldn't hear these things from the world, would we? And then God wants us to contemplate how weak we are, thinking about that in contrast to this world's philosophy. Past Tom wears cowboy boots, right? I've demonstrated that to you before. It's become a, you, you know, it's a proverbial saying that you can't pull yourself out by, by your own cowboy boots, I guess is how it goes. Do you, is that right? No. <laughs> You can't pull, your, yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> but you go to the back of the class. No, you stay flat, keep me on track. What a riot. Yeah, you can't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it straight. Fast Tops even demonstrated that to you. Do you know that the world, that the world, that the world's philosophy has arrived at the place where, where they are in every philosophical way trying to teach you that you can. Seriously. What was proverbial in setting forth that which is impossible, now the world is communicating to you that it's possible, and so they say, wow, you can do anything if you can dream it you can do it, and so spread your wings and fly and follow your heart. But what they don't tell you is all of those things severed from God eventually lead to destruction. So God wants us to contemplate our weakness. Why? It's good news, so that we depend upon him. Did you catch that? God wants us to contemplate and consider a weakness so that we would depend upon him. And that's when we'll really live, and that's when we'll have a life that will be impactual and will count for all of eternity, which is, which is the best thing. And then this emptiness. Don't you appreciate that on God? Don't, don't you love it that God, with all of his heart, wants you to not have an empty life? It, it's a sign of his love. Some of you will be able to relate to this. It's uh, hot off the press for me. And uh, I wanted to note this, especially with a quote that we have from this man. Some of you might be familiar with a man by the name of uh, Anthony Bourdain. He is a celebrity, he was a celebrity chef and TV personality. 
I, I don't know much of him. I saw his commercials because Mrs. Ann every once in a while and I watched the Travel Channel and he used to have a program on the Ch Travel Channel. Whenever we saw the advertisement, we knew that we were done watching because he invariably was emphasizing drinking and all this other stuff. Very popular man, 61 years of age, and this past 8th of June, he, he took his life. He had everything that life can offer him, and he took it. So I was scrolling down, and uh, you, you know, I can't believe the old man has learned a few of these things. So I was scrolling down, and, and uh, they had a number. He was a very popular person, and, and they had a number of his sayings. And this one really struck me. He says, and I'm quoting, your body is not a temple, but an amusement park. Enjoy the ride. And that man entered his, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, be gross with you all, but that man entered his motel room and took his own life. Are we really going to embrace the philosophy of this world, or are we going to stick with the words of life and the God who loves us so much that obviously he gave us his son and he saved us, which is the biggest and best thing, but then a God who continues to engage our lives and a God who wants to work out all things for good and a God who is seeking to prosper our lives and make them effectual, not only for this life, but the life to come. Wow, that's a God. What a great God. And I can understand why people will continue to say to us, you'll never regret serving this God. Let me take you back to the very first thing. David prompts us to think about our death. Why, why would he stand, sit before graduates and say, I want you to think about your death? Well, well, the answer is succinctly given in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 29. And I think Dave has that for us, or Jonathan or somebody. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 29, listen to this. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Y you get it? God wants our graduates and us all to think about our end because he knows this. That as we come to grips with and contemplate the end of our lives, we'll be making wise choices. That as we consider and contemplate what will matter at the end of our lives. God knows that we in turn will make that matter now. And you've heard this before, but wow, maybe from a little bit different angle. Let's make matter now what we know will matter then. And we're back to again, loving and serving, obeying the, the God who loved us and gave himself for us. So we'll stick with David, knowing that the world will not invite him back. <laughs> Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much. We are so glad that you have a word for us at every juncture in our life. In fact, your word, the intention of such is it would govern every aspect of our lives, every turn and every moment of our lives. And I, I pray that you would help us to make that more fully true. We're thinking especially of our graduates and we love and appreciate them. And if we... and. and we desire to give them many things. I mean, even on behalf of the church, we've given them a small gift, but oh God, there's, there's things much more important than that. And, and it really does boil down to your truth. And that's what we desire for them to have. And oh God, I pray that you would help them and that we'd be an example of this to them and that you would help them to live out the practical ramifications of Psalm 39, four. And that even as we leave this place, that we would be contemplating these four things, knowing that as we do, wisdom comes to us and we make good choices and uh, we, uh, it paves the way for us to live out lives that will impact many people for Christ. And so emblazon these words upon our hearts tonight, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Pastor Tom, in his prayer, uh, mentioned some of the other graduates, uh, and I just wanted to mention by name they're they're in your uh, they're in your program. 
uh, that's there. Uh, but on the back, uh, we, we know Luke Richards real well. He's our uh, guitarist here, but his older sister, Skylar, uh, graduated from Ogama Heights. And then two of our college grads, uh, Cole Mott Singer and Kelsey Wilson. So you can be praying for each of their lives and the transitions that God has for them. And uh, again, a, a, a big amen and echo of tonight's message in their, in their lives as well. Uh, we have a special treat. Uh, we have uh, a number of our, of our ladies and, and individuals have put some desserts together for you guys. There might even be a chocolate fountain out there. I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to a time of fellowship. Um, but just uh, a, a, twofold, a twofold thing here. Uh, one, we're going into the fellowship hall, and uh, we're, we're doing that for a couple of reasons. Uh, we're, we're doing that because that's convenient, and that's right where the kitchen is, so that's nice. Uh, but we're also doing it because VBS is set up in there. And, and take, take a moment tonight, just when the conversation lulls, or if I'm talking to you and I'm just going on and on, just go ahead and have a time of prayer. And, and think about this upcoming week um, with our, our young people uh, coming to VBS. Uh, there is a strong possibility that there's going to be a child come in through these doors and leave these doors knowing the Savior. And, and we, we are longing for people to grow in their faith and their love for the Lord, and we are longing for people to be saved. As Pastor Tom mentioned, our time here is short. Our life is but a vapor. So all of this decorating, these countless hours that, that leaders have put into this, um, so worth it when that little girl comes to know the Lord or when that little fella starts taking his faith for real. Uh, so, so be praying tonight uh, uh, and, and all week through for, for VBS and, and uh, we'll, we'll try and keep everything real nice in there and, and make sure it looks real good for Monday. Uh, but let me go ahead and pray. And then if you're able to stay and enjoy the fellowship, uh, that, that'd be great. Um, if not, we love you and you can have a, a good evening at home. Father, thank you again for this night together. Uh, thank you so much for the challenge from your word, Lord God, that was uh, first and foremost for our graduates and then also for us as well. I, can't hear enough the reminder of Christ's return. I can't hear enough the reminder that um, I, I have no idea how long I'm going to have here on this earth. And, and so I pray that we would be uh, majoring on the major things of life, that we be prioritizing well. Um, it is so easy to get caught up in the things of this world. It is so easy to spend countless hours in things that do not matter. And I pray, Father, that we would be uh, remembering and counting our days before you and recognizing that our lives are but a vapor. Help us to do all things not in our own strength because we have none, but help us to do all things in you. We can do everything that you've called for us to do in the strength that you've provided, Lord. Father, thank you so much for, for Becca and for Andy and Callie and Chloe, for Skylar, for Cole and Kelsey. Please minister to these precious lives, both those who are able to attend tonight and those that are out and about, Lord. Take care of them, lead and guide in them, and, and help them, Father, to know that you are always there. Help them to be faithful to you, as so few are today, and, and help them to, to wait on you, Lord, each and every day for what you have for them. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Please bless it. Thank you so much for each one that had a hand in it, Lord. And, and as we enter these doors, Lord, we are reminded of VBS this next week, Father. We pray that each leader, whether they're preparing a snack or teaching a lesson, that each leader would come with a right heart and mind before you and that you would allow the gospel to be clear, your word to be clear, and that lives would be impacted, whether growth in Christ or outright salvation. We pray this all, Father, in your precious Son's name. Amen.